Hello and welcome to Spot Tonight. I'm Cecilia Omogbe in Lagos. Always a delight to have you join us to talk sports in London. I'm Austin Okonapan. All right, Austin, the Athletics Integrity Unit have been busy today, really busy, because it's all about anti-doping violation, zero tolerance for doping. First, it was Bless Nokagra, and later we heard the news concerning Great Britain, whereby they were stripped of their 4 by 100 meters medal in Tokyo. They've been really busy. And of course, Super Focus of Nigeria. I told you yesterday it was going to be a slim win. Yes, it was slim, but then two nil. We will take it. The good thing is we did not concede any goal. Also, we'll be touching down on MPFL and NNL. It's Friday, you know. Uh, loaded, loaded uh, show tonight, Cecilia. Uh, just run, looking at the men who I know we're going to have fun with it, with our viewers from different parts of the world. You could see um, my face says it all about blessing a Kagbari. I mean, yeah. when you get to this stage of your career, you start thinking about ending it on a high. You want to be a model. You want people to remember you for the good things you've done. It's pretty unfortunate that this has happened to Bless and Kagbari and the AIU. They are not going back. They said she's been banned for 10 years. You said they've been busy. For them, they want to make sure that athletics is clean and it's all about integrity. So you can't question the sort of work they're doing, particularly if a lot of investigation has gone yeah. into that work. So we will talk about it more on the show tonight. Ironically, I was just chatting with Blessing Kagbari yesterday and uh, I was hoping that she would bounce back out of this, but uh, hopefully she'll find a way to get out of it. For the Super Falcon, Cecilia, good 2-0 win, but it was nervy, nervy. You cannot deny <laughs> that, that you had that one wondering what's going on because the Ivory has a good chance this, but just couldn't bury them. I love mm -hmm. what's going on with the MPA. And then it also has prospects waiting for match day two to preview it. And then, of course, the English Premier League. I'm right here. I'm going to give you all the details, Cecilia. Yeah, there's so much to talk about on Sport Tonight. But first of all, we just start with the story concerning Blessing Okagbari. Just this afternoon, the story broke that, hey, she's been banned for 10 years. We'll be waiting for what the Athletics Integrity Unit would do. Because you remember, during the Tokyo Games, when she was about competing in the semi-finals of the 100 meters, the story came out that, look, she uh, tested positive for human growth hormone. At the, the, the test that she did, the out-of-competition test that she did, you know, earlier before the games and then she was provisionally suspended they started their investigations but according to the uh release from the athletics integrity unit they said because of the multiple anti-doping rule breaches that she you know they violated and not just that the mm -hmm. fact that she did not cooperate with investigations and that's the reason she's having that 10 years ban normally it could have been four as usual but then, because she was yeah. actually involved with the uh, the criminal um, case concerning a particular uh, American in New York, where you know it was uh, actually uh, after a series of investigation, you know the Lira case, where the U.S. Attorney Office for the Southern District of New York announced that they, they've actually filed a criminal charge under the Rocha uh, Anti-Doping Act. Uh, against the Texas space therapist Eric Lira. She was linked to that, and of course, she was one of those athletes that was linked to that case because of that complaint and everything. So that's the reason she was banned for 10 years. And if she had maybe cooperated and you know, joined the investigation, maybe it wouldn't be up to 10. Mm -hmm. But right now, she's been banned for 10 years. Remember, she's 33. And when you're 33, you've been banned for 10 years. It simply that's, means that's retirement. The good news oh, is, good news on her is over. the fact that if athletics is over, she has something to fall back on. She's a master's degree holder, so she can maybe, you know, yeah. get on with something else, but, 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 but not track and field. Yeah. Uh, Cecilia, but integrity is everything, you know, particularly, yeah. as I said, when you are a model, this lady has done pretty much everything for the development of athletics in Nigeria in the last 10 years. You know, she's a model. Uh, it's just unfortunate that it is, this is happening to Bless Nakagbari. I was just chatting with her yesterday, and we didn't know that today this sort of statement yeah. will be released by the AIU, you know, but, but I just hope that she finds strength somewhere because... I know how broken she was yeah. at the Tokyo Olympics. I tried, I tried to talk to her. I said, blessing, please come on television. Let's find out what's going yeah. on. Let's hear your side of the story. Yeah. She, she only told me, she said, Austin, the voice said, peace be still. That's what she told me back then, you know? And, and you know, when these sort of things happen, you try to want to reach athletes and you know, 
you know what the response will be. But let me just read that statement from the Athletics Integrity Unit. Um, according to them, the disciplinary tribunal has banned Nigerian sprinter Blessing Akagbari for a total of 10 years, five years for the presence and use of multiple prohibited substances, and another five years for a refusal to cooperate with the AIU's investigation into our case. So you just, just call this one double jeopardy right there for Blessing Akagbari. Look, Cecilia, mm -hmm. we try to be very objective as journalists, to be balanced, but there's no way, no way sometimes you just you just feel because we're humans, because I know how much work Bless Nakagbari yeah, has put into our career. In. Mm -hmm. And you know also, Cecilia, you know, so this is very painful. I just hope that it's not just about her. When things like this happen to big people, those that are coming up, Joy Udo Gabriel, Perpetua and Kocha, all of them need to learn from this. Stay clean. Ask questions. Take care of your body. Whatever you're putting into your system, yeah. Be mega careful. Mm -hmm. If your doctor says take this, go do your research. Uh, when, when, uh, when an international competition is coming on, when they say test, make yourself available to test and be sincere. That's the lesson in this, Cecilia. That, that, that's the lesson indeed, because, I mean, she's got about 30 days for her to file an appeal to a court of arbitration for sports. Well, if that, oh. if she's able to do that, maybe, just maybe, something else will happen. But from all evidence, from all indication, everything before us from the IAU, from the U.S. Attorney General in the um from the office of the uh, U.S. attorney in the in the U.K. I mean, from what they've gathered and everything, in, including that criminal charge that was filed against Eric Lira, which she was, I mean, heavily linked with. I mean, it's a whole lot. Yeah. It, it's a whole lot to take because uh, we're uh, just hoping and praying that she will have that uh, that mental strength to be able to go through this a tough period because this is really tough for her. Because even all through the time, as you mentioned, we actually tried to reach out to her during the Olympics. She didn't yeah. want to speak. She just felt okay. Yeah, let's this. wait. What's gonna happen? She didn't want to yeah. talk to anyone until now. She didn't want to talk to anyone. She just mm -hmm. wanted to see what's gonna happen at the end yeah. of the day. But with all the evidence before us, as we mentioned earlier, I mean, it's a tough call for her. Remember she won uh, a bronze medal, uh, a go silver, yeah, 2018, Virgin Olympics, right? She, she, she was right there in 2008 where she won a silver medal, long jump, world championship, also 200 meters uh, uh, bronze medal and silver in long jump in 2013. So that was in Moscow. So she's a, a top class athlete and questions have been asked, uh, who will replace her? But we've seen what happened at the youth uh, Youth uh, Championship in Africa last year, where we saw a whole lot of young athletes coming up. We've seen Grace Wonkocha, you know, what she's been able to do in the 100 and 200 meters. So, I think we're having uh, some athletes coming up now. Maybe that's just uh, the only uh, silver lining for Nigerians because. When we are going for Olympics, usually yeah. everyone is talking about blessing or Kagbari. Now you have to look for another name, Grace Wonkocha. She is right there. But Austin, we've been joined by uh, our friend, yeah, colleague, where he's joining us at uh, this before evening. You get, before you tonight. get into yeah. it, before you get Alfred talking, Cecilia, okay. let me just set the record straight. I was... I was... And then I said... Um, okay. Okay, Austin. I think it's hard for me to really hear you. Maybe you have to say that again. What you just uh, talked about, Austin. Okay, I think we. Okay, I think we have to go to Alfred Okoligwe. Uh, to jo Alfred, good evening. How are you doing? Good evening, Cecilia. Um, good evening, Austin. Mm -hmm. And the network is acting up. I'm excited to be here, but um, I must say it. Um, a kind of very difficult evening for me. I'm processing all of um, the information as has come out from World Athletics and um, Athletics Integrity Unit and all of the things that have been thrown up. Uh, for me, there are so many issues. You, you, you talked about, uh, a, a moment ago, you were talking about the silver lining. I think, for me, it's not a question of the silver lining. It's um, somewhat of a colossal damage you turn to athletics. I mean, Blessing is a poster girl of... African athletics, uh, not just Nigerian athletics. To hear this happen, um, though some people have, um, those who follow the uh, sport religiously have hinted that it's a very, very bad case, given that she didn't cooperate with the 
uh, AIU. Uh, it's a very, very bad case. That much I learned from uh, somebody as big as Darius so when, when all of this happened. And I think the, st the statement media was that the sport came out with the highest, the severest, um, um, what I would call the punishment for this kind of infraction. It's unfortunate, most unfortunate. This is somebody that we all look up to to, um, to do the best. And now that uh, I think what she needs now is she needs all the support that you can get from all of us. Yeah, I mean, spot on right there, the support. And that's what Austin also talked about. She needs all the support sh that she can get from everyone because I've been to social media. I mean, the, the backlash that's coming from so many people and everything, I'm like, look, I mean, it, it, yes, doping is a very, very serious case. Yes, she did not cooperate according to IAU. But then, you know, these uh, athletes, they're humans, for instance. They're human beings first before they became a top athlete, the model, you know, that we all look up to. So we should be able able to understand and not just crucify them because hey they're still alive i mean once she, she's 33 i mean after the 10 year ban, 10 years ban she can't come back to track and field we understand that but then she's a master's degree holder so she can actually you know in other ways contribute to the society not just only on sport austin you were saying something before i wanted to introduce Alfred colleague can you go back to that quickly yeah i was i was saying that thank you so much for for correcting me, uh, and let's set record straight because I mentioned perpetual and culture instead oh, okay. of grace. The football legend got <laughs> into my head. So I was saying it's grace and culture, not perpetual. So that was yeah, the say. link with the super focus, right? Because that's what we're going to next. I get that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, All right. I think we yeah. have to rest Blessing's case for now. And hopefully she's able to bounce back from this. And she gets all the support that she will need during this uh, trying period. Because this is it's heartbreaking for everyone. It's heartbreaking for me, too. Tough. Tough. Okay. Tough. Yeah, so tough. let's talk about Great Britain, of course. Austin, I think you have to take that one. So it's not just Nigeria that had broken for Great Britain also. <laughs> well, there's something going on with Team GB. <laughs> yeah, Cecilia, you know, and the AIU, look, just, just trying to let everybody know that we're not targeting any region because some persons will be quick now to say, oh, um, they're looking at Kenya, looking at Nigeria. No, Britain have been stripped off. They are four by 100 silver medal also. And look, as I said, it's all about integrity. And Alfred, this isn't the first time that we've seen it happen. I think last year, a, a, a swimmer from Australia was also stripped of his medal. We've seen um, athletes from Japan. It's all over the world. What they are trying to tell athletes is you need to be clean so that when you win, it will come with some honor. Zero tolerance, that's what they are preaching. And uh, Uja... Uh... Chinjindu Uja happens to be the corporate right here. He was the one who violated that anti-doping rule. And of course, when she, he was suspended uh, last year in Tokyo, then uh, uh, she, he had to appeal the case. But after the appeal failed, just this Friday, Court of Appreciation for Sport found that where Uja has committed that anti-doping rule violation and then the result of the 4 by 100 meters relay uh, in August that the Team GB ran. He was one of those athletes, so it's been disqualified. So that's the reason for that. He ran alongside uh, Zana Hughes, Richard Kidley, Natalie Mitchell, Blake. They finished second behind Italy, who came tops. And because of this, Canada will now be upgraded to silver and China moving into a uh, bronze medal position. So that's what it's looking like for Great Britain. So it simply means that four by 100 meters are really silver medal that they won. They've been stripped of that. As you mentioned, it's zero tolerance. They don't want mm -hmm. any athlete that is not clean to compete at all. So even if you compete and then you're found out, of course, you'll be stripped of the medal. And that's what... Sure. They're doing right now. So, Nigeria, we are sad. Notice. Great Britain also joining in that. Yeah, Cecilia, notice that I try to stay off the name CJ Uja because we know with this team, guys, there's no way someone in that team will say that they don't know what this one is doing or what this one is. Athletes can be very, very funny. Yeah. But now that names are flying around, it's okay. Right here in the UK, uh, this news they say marks the biggest doping scandal in british olympic history mm -hmm. and only the third time a team gb athlete has lost a medal at summer or winter games so 
before we try to tie it to names or region or whatever, I know the sort of team spirit and bonding that these athletes use in competing. So they look after themselves. They ask questions. This was a team event, four by one yeah. meter relay. And if you say you stripped them of the Olympic silver medal, let's stay with the team. Let's not put it down to CJ Uja failing the doping test alone. I because very soon <laughs> that will be the only news that people will put out there. And next thing you hear, they want to trace it back to Africa and give it all sorts. It's a team sport. They were they were all competed as a team, and now all of them have been stripped of that silver medal as a team. But Austin, but one thing we also need to understand is the fact that he was the one who accepted that. I mean, after the verdict came out, he said he, he unknowingly consumed contaminated supplements. That was what he consumed, that he didn't know that it was contaminated. So he took it and then it was just him while the others were not in that fact. But however you're going to take it, but I think the other teammates will not be happy because of what he did unknowingly, I mean, according to him, is affecting the whole team. So... It's a sad one. So we really can't take him out of it. And you, uh, most times you always talked about the fact that athletes should be responsible for what gets into their mouth. I think he needs to take responsibility for that, really. What do you think, uh, Alfred? Okay. No, can I come in? I, I'm I mean, trying to in things, yeah. it's, not, it's not the first time something like this has happened. Sorry, Austin. Um, Nigeria's uh, biggest, uh, one of the biggest Olympic um, medals that we uh, picked was in Sydney 2000. And then the quartet of um, Anefia Kudobong, Gonchud, Modine, and the late Sunday Bada, and I um, can't remember, uh, Fidelis Gatama ran that historic 400, 4 by 400 meters race. And the Americans came first by a mile. I mean, but at the end of the day, I think a certain athlete in that American quartet, Petit so the great um, Michael uh, Johnson. Johnson was part of that um, uh, that quartet of the American team. They lost their medal and they lost to Nigeria. So uh, things like you benefited in the past, and sometimes these things just happen. Um, the, the sport is a very very competitive one. It's one that you have to be at the top of your game all the time. The, there's a fine line between guys who the who do who take stuff legally and guys who don't take it legally. We know the story of um, the great um, Griffith Joyner set all sorts of record in women athletics before you know it like um like a candle in the wind she's gone but i know a lot of people who swore that before that record can be broken it took a lot for the break that record that that those races are not you know issues of drugs and athletics has always been something that it, it's it's it, you know it's been with us and i i think like um they say in the street um we will create friends when they create a razor some some of these guys are smarter than others, or maybe they have the way without to control things that they can, you know. They, I'm not alleging that they are, but I'm saying that they have, they know where to um, really take care of themselves, some of the things that they take, some of the things that they consume that are within the limits of the optimal use of it. And sometimes it, when it's acquired, you don't well, get to hear things like this. So um, it, is, it is what it is. Um, the, uh, Team GB has lost this one, and um, the Chinese have benefited from, from that. It will continue because at the end of the day, uh, when you take stuff, by the time in the, in the long arm of the world catch up with you, somebody else too, somebody else too will benefit from this. Yeah, Austin, you were going to talk before uh, Alfred, you know, pick it up. No, Austin. To say uh, you, we, you know, sometimes when these things happen, uh, some people just have a way to try to now want to um, associate a particular name with, with, with his background. So I'm just saying that, yes, Uja has admitted, I don't want people now trying to say it's just a name, it's a team, you know? So, so basically, my talk is, uh, for instance, Francis Ngannou wins, and then they say he's from France. When he's not doing well, they say it's Cameroonian, <laughs> you know. So all of those things just what we're trying to say. So, but but I love the fact that the AIU is winning, integrity winning, well, the gradually winning the world who's making athletics clean, whether or not the event has passed. If they find out that you were you were faulty in any way, they strip you of your medal, 
Athletes will learn from this, and yes, it will bring some honor, glory, and respect to athletics. That's what we're all hoping and praying for. Situations whereby athletes can actually go into championship and compete, com uh, compete clean and not thinking of as the next person dope or not. Everyone competing clean, you know, you have a, a, a better uh, uh, field for everyone to compete and win their championship. So we're leaving this one and talk about, of course, the Super Falcons of Nigeria. We'll take a look at the results coming from the African qualifiers for uh, coming from the qualifiers for the Africa Women's Cup of Nations that will be taking place in Morocco later this year. For the Super Falcons, it was a two-nil win over Cote d'Ivoire. Of course, e former. Or Numonu, she was the one who scored both goals. No assists at no problem. She scored the two goals, 29th minute, and the second one, 56th minute. And South Africa and Algeria, it was still a two-nil victory. Zimbabwe and Botswana, Botswana beating Zimbabwe 3-1. Cameroon and Gambia, okay, 8 nil. All right, Tunisia and Equatorial Guinea, 5 nil. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then Cameroon from Cameroon and Gambia resort is shocking. Should Gambia play the second leg? Well, I don't know. Mm, maybe they'll have to, but they'll be at home, so it, they just have to stay <laughs> at home for the Cameroon. You never say never. You never say never. You never say never. Austin, there is no way. There is no way that Gambia will Simia, overturn this down. resort. It is not possible. However you want to talk let's, about it, however you want to see pause. it, Alfred, it is not possible. Let's put a pause on the analysis. Go on this quick break. When we come back, we'll give Alfred a chance to talk about it. We'll be right back. Saturday mornings with Alero and Ayo on Sunrise. Good morning. Have you had your cup of coffee already? Maybe you take half then. Please call it what it is. A camo. Or cocoa. Oh dear. <laughs> with today's issues that are... They have this attitude of looking at things from tribal or religious uh, angle. Words that motivate you. Don't let it drown you. Don't let it kill you. Uh, come out of it and then let's build a better world. And personalities that fascinate you. So them fit no. Them fit no, them fit no, I serve a living God. Three hours of interesting conversations that involve you every Saturday, only on Channels Television. Welcome back from that. Welcome back, first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, Cecilia, you were trying to tell me that it's impossible <laughs> uh, for the Gambia to do whatever against Cameroon. <laughs> but it's, it's football, you know? <laughs> okay, don't tell, me again, don't tell me again that football happens. Yes, football will happen. But Gambia, Cameroon... 8 0 first leg Cameroon winning that one 8 0. There is no way that Gambia were gonna get into that game. I'll stand by that. It is not possible. Remember when the four connects went to Congo to beat the team? Was it 4 0? They didn't come because, <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, Omicron was just starting at that time. They didn't even bother to come to Nigeria for the second leg. They, they, they didn't bother because they know already that there is no way they will overturn that result. So I'm not saying that the Gambians will be afraid, but the fact that they've, won, they've lost the first leg in Cameroon, then they will be at home for Cameroon come visiting. So they don't, they don't need to travel, but there is no way. You'll overturn that. Afraid, I'm going to ask you again. Is it possible? Because Austin said football usually happens. But in this situation, football is not going to happen. In, it's over as a context. It's, um, <laughs> Thank you. It is, it is over as a context. I absolutely agree with you, Cecilia, on this. It needs. Um, the the Cameroon will have to show up. They will, they will show up uh, for the reverse fixture. And um, I mean, given their pedigree, this is a country that, okay, be, uh, when you take out say Nigeria and South Africa, in the next um, category, you'll be looking at uh, Ghana and Cameroon. That's how strong they are. I mean, Cameroon would have won one or two um, the, uh, the women Cup of Nations um, if Nigeria had not beaten them. 
They've lost several to Nigeria in the finals, semi-finals. So they are one of the stronger sides on the continent. Uh, but for that game, that can be a Cameroon eight new first leg. It's over as a contest. Uh, perhaps if you have players that you want to try out, or maybe you have a tactical formation that you want to see how it will play out. Um, you want to, as a coach, try one or two things. The reverse fixture is um, where you take that kind of risk. You are allowed to put this eight, considering eight goals, ain't gonna happen. <laughs> so, as still you see, two against one. So, you don't stand a chance at all. It's not okay. happening. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. That's a big. That's a big win for for Cameroon. So, you you guys have a point. Let's talk about the Super Falcons. Yes. Two zero win. Uh, over Cote d'Ivoire, Alfred, it was it was nervy. I know Cecilia knows that it was nervy, but somehow the Super Falcons got the job done. How confident are you that they can finish this off, Alfred? So they needed the, they needed the boost. They needed this uh, morale boost um, in the first leg. Um, it, it had to be nervy. I mean, this was a team that denied us. Yeah, denied us the tickets um, going to the Olympics. I was at the testing Balogun. When this picture, we just needed to score one. We just needed to beat them by uh, any means possible. It didn't happen as much as we struggled. And I remember raising this point last week uh, when uh, Stila reminded me that that was the team that the self strong button was um, first. So coming back, and you look at the pedigree, the one at the 11 or 13 uh, against the J coming into this game. So you see a team that scores very, you know, when it comes to scoring, they, uh, they, they, score, they score big. And they have players who not only play in the Grand League, also play abroad. I mean, some other African countries have caught up with us in terms of, you know, players' migration and players leaving the local scene to go get experience from, from abroad. And so that being at the background, I think um, if you have played somewhat of a, um, you know, that psychological effect of, Hey, how do we approach these guys? How do we play this? We've, we've been here before. These guys have tried us before. I, I, I want to commend the Nigerian Football Federation for what they've done with this team. And for having like over 20 days camping, yes, not all of the players showed up. Um, the professionals came in about a week to this match. But you could see that in time past, when you look at the Nigerian lineup and you say there's no Asat or Shola, I mean, you send it will just, everybody will be like, where would we go from? Where would be the athlete? Is our brand where we uh, are strength as well. But I mean, if you see the way they progressed um, um, so far, having players, uh, the, the girl that scored today, perhaps, for now she has, she has, has scored for the Super Bowl, because I mean that there is a depth of talent. And if having the opportunity to train together to play is something that is key this time around. And um, I want to commend that you have a position for providing that platform, of course. Having the girls who play in the NWFL, giving them the opportunity to play, I hope, I wish that uh, we have an opportunity where um, players in the NPFL can have equal opportunity with uh, guys out there, try out and see if they can um, get some the situation where we have uh, three players go to the to the nation's court, 23 of them foreign base, perhaps maybe one, the reserve goalkeeper or third goalkeeper for the, I mean, it's not good enough. Uh, so the girls have shown the direction to go. I uh, hope um, it's good. Uh, this can be replicated in the men's game. Yeah, hopefully they can replicate that. You mentioned Ifoma, you know, she's 27. She plays for Gotham L FC in New York in the U.S. But she was able to come into this game. She's making her third appearance for Nigeria, a third goal. Remember they were in June when they had the a summer series uh, event organized by the U.S. women's national team. She was part of that squad. And, of course, coming down here, being able to get the two goals. Yes, we were worried on Wednesday when I started to show her, you know, so far that hamstring injury, we were thinking she's not there. Derek Barano said they didn't come. Uche Nakanu arrived today. Christy Ochebe. So we had Ochebe. We had some players who were not there. And everyone was thinking, where are the goals going to come from? We're now relying, okay, Monday Gift is there. Luckily, Rashida Lajibade, she can score also. She's also part of the team. But Monday Gift didn't come in until about 80th minute. But then the two goals have been scored. And our coach ran the wardrobe. I mean, when he talked about the fact that he wants to get the girls firing again, scoring again, I'm beginning to believe him because, yes, two goals may not be too good enough because you're talking about the sixth uh, best ranked team in Africa. Cut the ball, not the pushover. They're not a small side. I mean, 
from the 80th minute, it was a nervy game. I mean, there was a time I had to stand up from a seat because they almost, almost scored. But then the defense was solid on oh, no, as usual. I mean, she was everywhere. Rita Chikolo, she wasn't looking at safe, you know. Uh, she, she, she's oh, in her 30s, you no know, late 30s and on oh, no, They were just, you know, up there to really ensure that the Falcons will not concede more goals. But then let's get reactions uh, coming from the game. First, we'll listen the co to the coach, Rodney Wardrum. I think you're right. In, in the last 20 minutes is basically what I was talking about, learning to manage the game better at the end. And I didn't think we did a good job of that the last 20 minutes. Um, but I love the fight that we presented to, to hold on. As far as the, 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 the past history, you know, with uh, results, the last time with the Ivory Coast, I've said this all week to anybody that's listened to me, is I'm not, I love history. But I'm not a big believer in past history having anything to do with what we do presently. And that's what we preached all week. It didn't matter what's happened in the past. It was all about the players that are here now. And it's a different group of players. It's a different coaching staff. And um, so we can't, can't be concerned with the past. I do feel very um, positive about the second leg. But we also know we've only done half the job. So we know and respect that they're fully capable of of getting a result at home. So we have to prepare, be prepared to, to get that result on the road. But, but I, I like my team. They were rough. I mean, you know, they had some chances, but they were rough. Um, but I think they were able to come out and win. And they played really well. They had a couple of chances better and try to contain that as much as we can. Um, but overall, I think we did well. I think we had a good performance. And now that we played them once, I think going forward, it should we should be manageable. And that's where we know what they're going to bring. We know what they're used to. Um, so we're just going to go into the next week preparing for that. Right, we need to go on a quick break. When we come back, of course, we'll still talk more about the Super Focus of Nigeria and all the teams that are on the verge of qualifying for the Africa Women's Cup of Nations in Morocco. Welcome back. Uh, Austin, of course, uh, you heard what Alfred Okoligwe said, saying, talking about the fact that, yes, with this uh, 2 0 victory, the uh, Super Falcons are just on the verge of qualifying for the Women's Africa Cup of Nations in Morocco. I mean, the players that we have, the ones that need turn up, the ones that turn up, and the fact that you have uh, home based players being in camp for a while, about 12 of them before five were sent home and the others stayed back. And we saw the ones that were able to join the team to play, like Monday Gift, who came on 10 minutes uh, towards the end of regulation time. I think okay. we, we weren't in doubt that the Super Falcons can go. Cecilia, can you hear me? Yes, of course, yeah. Okay, so we weren't in doubt that the Super Falcons can go on to, you know, get the results against Cote d'Ivoire, but we were concerned about the way they would play, the, the, the execution, execution style, uh, what was... So this... And will pick uh, 2-0 is a, is a win, but is it a sort of win that you want to take to the second leg? That's what we're talking about. But Randy Waldrum, I gave the sort of response that I wanted to hear. He talked about uh, the confidence in the team and the need for them to believe. Also, that done. Um, some of the key players weren't available. Shout out to Ashley Plumter. She played a fantastic game today. Um, Ifoma Onumonu also forgets the brace. Look, I think in general it was a good team performance, but they didn't just give us what we see about the Super Falcons. For instance, Rita Chikolu, you could tell that she's still trying to get some understanding with Ashley Plumter, but we know the Ivorians and, and the quality that they brought into the mm -hmm. game. And so we knew it was going to be difficult. But as you said, this is a team that by the time they get the full mail for the on the May before instance, whenever she gets a chance uh, to play for the team, she gives 100 percent I just mentioned Ashley Plumter, who played like she's been with this team forever. I think Chiama Kanadozi also had a good game, yes. you know, in those saves uh when they when they really mattered, particularly those tight edge saves that, that she made. They just mm -hmm. need to go with the belief that uh Waldrop talked about in the second leg and they might just get the job done, but there's still a lot of work to be done. They need to show improvement 
in the second leg, Cecilia. Yeah, hopefully we will, we will be able to see that. They will fly out of the country on Sunday and the second leg is on Wednesday. And of course, that, that will be in Abidjan. So Cote d'Ivoire 2-0 down. We'll see if they can overturn that. But if we have full complement of the players, Nigeria obviously booking a ticket to the Women's Africa Cup of Nations in Morocco. All right, we're well, leaving the Super 4 currents now and quickly going to, yes, the most important league in Nigeria, Nigeria National League, the league that is getting everyone talking because of the new clubs that are coming up and the different uh, innovations these clubs are doing, trying to change the narratives of how football is being run. But we'll just take a look at the fixtures for this weekend. Today, there was a game between Vandreza and Ikurudu United right here in Lagos. But you have other games for the weekend, if we can see that quickly, starting from our Group A1, the games are for uh, the Nigeria National League. You also have uh, games in A2, B1, and B2. Okay, uh, this is uh, Friday's result. Vandreza and Ikurudu United ended 1-0. Zamfara and Economy Warriors, it also ended 1-0. Vandreza drew their first game against Insurance who came. It was goalless, but now they got one goal. Ikurudu also, it was, the game they played last weekend also was goalless, but now they also got a goal. In other group, you have Group A, One Way, Oya Sports and Yobe Desert Stars. Uh, Sokoto United and ABS, Mighty Jets and EFCC, FWC Champions and City. FC will also be in action in Group A2. Moving over to Group B, Group A2, that was Group A1. Adamawa United and Jigawa Golden Stars, Donna United and Green Berets, KB United and DMD, Rose Safety and Nav Rockets, Kogi United and Molofashi. That's in Group A1. Now move on to B1, where you have Bene Insurance and JRTT will be in action, Ibom Youth and Godoski, AKT United and Abel Kuta. Uh, you also have Campos and Oshu United, Giant Brillers and Gateway United will be in action. And the last one is coming from Group B2, where you have Abia Comet and FC1 Rocket in action, Crown FC and Warrior Woods also in action, Bayesa United and Newe United, Go Round and Ijebu United, Ottawa Solo and Sporting Lagos will also be in action. These are the games coming from Nigerian National League uh, this weekend. Quickly, Alfred, which one gets you talking? The draw in Lagos or the games coming up this weekend? Uh, the the Vandreza project um, uh, is in two games. Some of them played in Lagos and two draws. Um, their first game um, against Pendle Insurance and then in the draw goal less than six points and this game. Uh, I mean, there are so many teams now that play in Lagos and so many of them coming with different you know, trying to, like you said, change the narrative, trying to see how best to really mind what, you know, on the potential that this market has. I'm talking about the Nigerian football market and the space. See what, what is happening elsewhere. I mean, the more we attract multinationals to our football, the better for everybody. It's better, it's really better for the ecosystem. One of the cities that have benefited myself from the NNL invasion is the uh, Lagos. Um, but in Lagos, Vandreza, I could do all of them play in Lagos. I mean, um, if um, Lagos is the economic capital of the country, it, 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 then it then follows that um, I has to have so many in terms of um, teams that, that, you know, that have been uh, playing football. So the NNL is a good project. Uh, like they call themselves the most important league. Um, <laughs> it has to be very, very important, both in the way it's played and the way it's organized. Mm. Interesting. Austin is still Austin. <laughs> Get to London. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the NNL. You know, I was commending them the other day on the show uh, for the innovation that the teams in the NNL are bringing to football development in Nigeria. So it will be good to see what Sporting Lagos will do on March day two. Bendel Insurance. They are also showing that. Uh, they can rebrand really and take care of, of their players. Uh, so that game between Bedel and Insurance uh, gets more attention now after and Van Dresa today. So if Bedel and Insurance goes on to win, they'll start winning. I, I like it. I like what we're seeing in the NNL. So let's just hope that we continue to see uh, good football uh, from the most in Nigeria. <laughs> 
All right, well, let's jump into MPFL right now. Games also for this weekend. It will be match day 14 in Nigeria Professional Football League. Plata United still top of the table. Of course, we'll see what Rivers United will be able to do this weekend to see if they can steal that. Aqua United and Dakada will be in action. Yeah, that's Uyo Derby. Uh, Austin is going to talk about that. Aima and MFM. MFM winning against Katsina, <laughs> but now they are going over to Aima to see if they can get something from there. Gombe United and Plata United table toppers. Gombe United, they've been on the winning run right now. Kano Pillars and Abia Warriors will also be in action this weekend on March Day 14. Kasina United and Heartland, Lobby Stars and Remo Stars, Nasro United and Niger Tenedos, Rivers United and Rangers. Rivers who badly want to get back to the top, but then Rangers might just be the team to stop them. Shooting Stars and Wiki Tori, Sunshine Stars and Quara United. These are the games for this weekend. Alfred, quickly, just in 30 seconds or one minute, just wrap it up. Which one to get you talking in March Day 14 of Nigeria Professional Football League? The first battle, the first. Um, Rivers United, um, okay, second battle, third, I beg your pardon. Yeah. I'm not like United is stopping. Um, Rivers United who want to get one over Rangers. This is because last season, I think they won it by two goals to Nils. Um, But one thing that Rangers have done this is Rangers is the only team in the MPFL of the 20 teams that have not lost an away game. They've lost, um, they've lost at home, they've drawn at home, but they've not lost away. And so with that record, we just on the line this weekend against Rivers United. <laughs> and you know um, how strong that Rivers United uh, is. Um, they finished second in two previous seasons, and they're looking at this time around, they want to stop the league. They were there at the top of it temporarily until Platinum United came storming and beating everybody, including Rangers. So that game is one that I want to see. I also want to see MFM uh, play Ayimba. Okay. Ayimba has, has been playing hot and cold. This is there's a change of guard at MFM. There's a certain okay. young, very young coach. I believe if we look at the records, um, I start to be corrected, might be the youngest um, coach in the MPFL. His name is Christian Ortega. Um, uh, uh, Christian Ortega. I don't know whether he's Ortega is, uh, but that's what um, I was literally. He's been in charge of this team, and under the management, okay. they got their first draw at home after losing like five games of, the, of Detroit. And last weekend, they, they cut it up with a win. So, and they're growing a confidence that between okay. MFM and um, Ejima, there's a long history that um, they just want to put surprises in Naba. Ejima okay. will have to, I would really dig it to, to win that game. So, for me, those uh, two games are um, uh, the games I really want to see. Mm. All right, Alfred Won, thank you so much for joining us on Sports Tonight. Thank you very much, um, Silla. Thank you, Austin. Um, pleasure is mine always. Thank All right, you. Austin, quickly, what's happening in England, especially with the captaincy issue concerning Harry Maguire and Cristiano Ronaldo? But the coach has come out to say, look, Harry Maguire is going to be world captain to the end of the season. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and, and look, both players have said no power struggle here, that it's about team spirit, team bonding. But we know that the coming of Cristiano Ronaldo will worry some people. I remember we said it when he was signed that we'll see the way Manchester United will handle his ego. So, uh, Cristiano, uh, look, he's just chilling, you know. At, at this stage <laughs> of his career, he's got nothing to prove. Uh, so, this captaincy rift will continue. Harry Maguire said, look, there's no power struggle with Cristiano Ronaldo. If they want to make him the captain, the fine is the professional will get on with it. But Cecilia, we All know right. these things, you know. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> they will get on, uh, get on together. Yeah. All right, well, it's the weekend. Well, I want to thank you so much for watching in Lagos. I'm Cecilia Mogbe. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll be here. We'll do this again next week. Until then, I'm Austin Okonakwan in London. In everything you do, remember, keep talking sports back there for now.